Welcome to Reflections, a program where we discuss values and virtues for the transformation of the individual and the society in general. I am Father George Ehusani, and I have with me in the studio today a big guest. He is Professor Ise Sage. Ise Sage. Ise Sage. Professor Ise Sage, Chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Prof, you're welcome. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I brought Prof into the studio today for us. First of all, uh, Professor Ishe Sage is a household name in Nigeria. Um, everybody who knows about social life in Nigeria, political life in Nigeria, uh, life of uh, the practice of law and rule of law in this country, we know Prof. He has been involved in advocating for true democracy, for the rule of law, for justice. Uh, he has never kept quiet when it comes, when it matters to speak. Through the period of military rule, into democracy since 1999. Uh, Professor Ichesage is well known in Nigeria and we are happy to be able to have him for some discussion. Prof, what do you see today uh, with law practice? I mean, you've been a lawyer since 1966. Well, many of our viewers were not born by then. <laughs> uh, called to buy since 1966. Professor of Law of the University of Ife and for many years also taught at the University of Benin and retired from the University of Benin in 1994, 1996, uh, uh, 1996 and has been in private practice since then. Uh, even has been practicing since 1988. 88. 88. Good. So you are very familiar with law practice in Nigeria. You are very familiar with the challenges we have with law practice. Um, and today you are the chairman of the advisory committee, the presidential advisory committee against corruption. When you were appointed, every Nigerian was very happy because we know your antecedents and your reputation. Uh, your, we know how uh, forthright you are uh, in these matters. Uh, but many Nigerians, two and a half years into the struggle against corruption, many Nigerians are a bit apprehensive as to are we really succeeding? Uh, what would you say are the gains of the uh, uh, struggle against corruption in these two and a half years of the Buhari uh, administration? Um, the kind of indications we are getting here and there is that corruption is so heavily entrenched in the Nigerian society that um, we are just uh, at the tip of the iceberg, as it were. Uh, are we really making gains? What, kinds of what kind of gains are we making? And then how is it that we are not yet able to secure convictions of high profile cases of corruption? Uh, what are the challenges? If we are making gains, what kind of gains? And then what are the challenges that uh, the fight against corruption you know, have, have to contend with? And how can we possibly overcome those challenges, Prof? Hmm, that's quite a mouthful. <laughs> um, I think one, I want to make one point clear first. That is that um, the fight against corruption is a uh, multifaceted, multifaceted. Type of, yes, type of struggle. There are different aspects of it, uh, different sectors. Uh, the fight has not been too successful in the area of conviction. High-profile politicians and public officers. I want to stress that high-profile. Because the there has been some Oh, there are hundreds and hundreds of convictions by the EFCC and the ICPC. But it is these very high-profile people that have given us a lot of trouble in terms of conviction because they have lawyers who have specialized in the area of perpetually uh, filibustering, that's what I would call it, perpetually uh, frustrating the case from coming to a conclusion. Hmm. So that... Adjourning uh, and adjourning Adjourning, cases. challenging everything, using every trick under the book. Preliminary uh, objections. Previously, they will use prelim the preliminary objection or they are going to uh, say that the charge is defective and then the judge now will concentrate on those and forget about the, the, main, substantive the main substantive corruption water. action. When he finally rules, after two years, they will appeal to the Court of Appeal. That will take three to five years. Then they will appeal to the Supreme Court. They all know that there's jurisdiction. There's no problem. But it's just their tactic. 
mm. which is unethical. In oh, fact, if unethical. these people were abroad, like in the UK, they would have been struck off the road for the, the type of practice they practice. So it gets there. By the time it comes back to the High Court, 10 years or more, 12 years have passed. And justice delayed is justice denied. Absolutely. And you will find by that time, the witnesses and have already yeah. been dissipated. Many other things have happened. The prosecutor has retired or has become a judge. And so, and of course, they also bribe witnesses or threaten witnesses. So, this is the methods they've been using. Unethical uh, methods. Very unethical. And um, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act tried to correct all this. This was in 2015. Uh, by saying that trials now must go on from day to day. Okay. And that if there are reasons why there must absolute, absolutely be uh, an adjournment, it must not be more than 14 days. And there can be no adjournment, more than f four adjournments in any case. Is that how it has been playing out? No. That's the, that is the interesting thing. That's why we are going to have monitors now. You cannot, again, the judge must not take on a preliminary objection and give a ruling. No. You take the preliminary objection, keep your ruling, and tell them to go on the main case. Okay. Then concurrently. When, yes, concurrently. After the main case has been, uh, has been um, concluded, mm -hmm. on the same day, he will give his ruling on the preliminary objection and the judgment ah, on the main case. So that the preliminary objection does not... Um, delay, delay the main case. That is the law now. And also another trick they used to, uh, to use was to appeal on any little point. This new law says if you appeal, the appeal goes on, the main case goes on. Because oh. they will now apply for stay of proceedings. Yes. And the court will stay proceedings pending, pending the, the appeal. appeal. But that's, uh, that has stopped. The appeal can go on, but you continue with the main case. Finally, another trick they used effectively, I don't know how they did that, was to get a judge uh, promoted just before he del delivers judgment. Oh, so, so that you case, need another judge? Yes, start afresh. So all the things they were using. It was but, but, just, but how could they do that without the connivance of the uh, Nigerian Judicial Council? Exactly. So there's some connivance somewhere. There's some connivance. So the problem is a very serious problem. It's not only lawyers, it's not only politicians. The judiciary have been responsible to, in a major way, for what we've been going through. Mm -hmm. So those are the reasons. But when that one cleared, and prosecutions have started with, with hoping that we know within nine months and so on, a case will be concluded, other types of tricks were introduced. Uh, if you notice, I won't mention the case so yeah. that Nobody may say, you know, I've come to yeah. embarrass him in public. There was a, a very serious case against a very high official. After, on each occasion, after the, uh, the prosecuting counsel has finished, uh, uh, what is it, um, the, it's evidence of the yes. witness has been concluded, his yes. witness. That is... Um, uh, the main evidence yes. has concluded, been concluded. Then... In cross-examining, the lawyers of the defense will make sure that cross-examination never comes to an end. And the, the first, there will be about five lawyers representing different defendants. And each one has to cross-examine. So you can imagine one lawyer cross-examining one witness who gave his evidence within 25, in one day, yes. cross-examining him for 25 days. And the judge will sit down looking. That's part of the problem we are talking about, of judges not taking control is of their there, court. Is, yeah, is there anything the judge can constitutionally oh, yes. do oh, about yes, that? Yes. If he's in control, he's in charge. He's the president of the court. So if, a, if a lawyer is going on doing that, all he has to say is, Mr. Man, I give you two hours. To round up this cross-examination. Yes. At, at, at the end of two hours, that's the end of your cross-examination. That's all. That's all he needs to say. But so we just start, sit down, allow these people to dominate them, take control of their court from them. So all these have gone on 
to create the situation we have now. So it is not just because the prosecution is poor or that charges are not well drawn. Yes, of course, there's some been in, there has mm -hmm. been some incompetence. Yeah, I mean, uh, situations mm. where you have 25 count charge, yes. whereas you can if you have five, you can have three, yes, four, yes. And, and, and succeed yes, in conviction. Yes, uh, that, that has been addressed. We've had uh, workshops for them. And we've got people to come and teach the prosecutors how to draw up charges. And they've been told where you can have five charges, don't have ten. Yes. But even if you succeed in all the ten, they all be running concurrently. concurrently anyway. So they so don't make, make sense. Again. No. So th that is going on. But in spite of that, there are contributory factors from the judiciary, from the lawyers, and so on. Those are the things we are facing. That's why we are relieved that the Chief Justice of Nigeria has now directed all courts in the country to designate one of their courts for anti corruption, corruption yes. court, yes. And that monitors would also be appointed. Of course, he appointed monitors which most of us disagreed about because of their status, senior advocates and so on. We feel they are inappropriate monitors. Apart from their involvement in a lot of these corruption cases where they are defending people, in which case there may be uh, a, a conflict, a of, conflict interest. of interest. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they are well known. So you step into a court, the mm -hmm. judge knows you. Of course, his attitude will change. Mm -hmm. uh, and what he would have done naturally would no longer be done until they leave. So for these reasons, we, the PACAC is arranging to have it, its own monitors. monitors. Okay. We are going to be unknown people, civil society organization members, uh, press, uh, newspaper people, young lawyers who have just graduated, mm -hmm. who will just slip into the court unnoticed. The court is an open place. Yes. So, so um, so well, the point I'm trying to make is that the problem has not been solely that of poor prosecution. There have been serious contributory factors. Okay, look at the latest now. We have a um, court of appeal saying that you cannot prosecute any judge until the uh, NJC and does has actually heard the petition against him, found him guilty, and suspended him or retired him. So if the NJC is unwilling or unable to do anything about a case, then which the anti-corruption agencies know about, then everybody has to sit down. And so, so you have a new level of immunity outside the Constitution being granted to judges by this. I, I, have, I had one of your colleagues here, a professor of law, yes. and then when I complain about how slow this process is in yes. this country and how justice delayed is justice denied, he said, you know, um, we do not run an inquisitorial system. Mm. We run an adversarial system. Yes. And I said, but is it not the same adversarial system that they, they run in England? Exactly. In, the, in Britain? Yes. Uh, how is in it America. That, how is it that they yes, are succeeding the in getting convictions? And, and then here we, we say, well, because everyone who is accused has a right to defense. Yes. And the public good suffers. I mean, my own... My absolutely. own concern is about the public good, yes, the common good. Yes. And, and we, the Nigerian people are seeing the common good suffering. Yes. And my worry and my concern is that if we do not do something about this, then we may not be able to stop mob action at some point. Uh, a, a, a situation where people will take law into their mm -hmm. hands because they do not see the rule of law operating. So I think it is in not only in the interest of uh, of jurists and, and and lawyers and so on, in the interest of all Nigerians. Absolutely. To see that our legal system works. It works. Yes. You are right. Um, there could be more action yes. if the situation is not brought under some control. Yes. If some results are not being seen. Yes. If there is a feeling that those who looted the funds of the country and reduced us into penury. Are, are thumbing their noses at the whole country because the judicial system is not working. If there is a so, sense that we are helpless. Yes, we are, that we are helpless. It's true. And, uh, but 
we'll continue to beef up the efforts to get some of these cases um, concluded. I'm sure a few will be concluded this, the, this year and we'll start getting some results. But it's not as bad as it looks for two reasons. One, some convictions have actually said occurred so. at a higher level, even at the higher level. Um, petroleum subsidy scammers, at least two of them have gone to prison. Those who were collecting subsidy without... Without subsidizing, yes. Yeah, exactly. Two have gone for 10 years. Uh, a professor in Ibadan who was also involved in, in fraud in the institute he was heading, IIT, I understand, has also been convicted. Quite a number of prosecutions are going on. A part of the, part of the, the, the successes that pla places like EFCC, yes. organizations like EFCC will say they record, has to do with plea bargaining. Okay, yes. Yeah, and, yes. and I have a problem about that whole thing, which I am told is, is in the statutes of uh, yes. EFCC, yes. plea bargaining. It's, it's, yes. Now, in a country like this, um, where corruption is so rife and so entrenched, does plea bargaining not give the impression that uh, um, these things are acceptable? So somebody steals five billion, and then he is able to come and negotiate to to return three billion or two or four billion, and keeps one billion, and then um, he gets a pat on the back, as it were. From a moral ethical point of view. Uh, don't you see some problem there in terms of uh, does it serve as deterrence? Is there any deterrence effect in somebody who stole five billion, returning four billion, and and getting a pat on the back, and then we are applauding the fact that uh, we succeeded in getting some 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 billions from him? No, the thing is that's not how plea bargaining works. Okay, you, the issue of plea bargaining would arise if the prosecutor feels that. The evidence it has probably will not be sufficient to convict. To convict. Yes. So instead of wasting national assets in terms of time and resources for three, four, five years, and then at the end having the case dismissed, in a plea bargain, the defendant, we call him defendant now under the new law, not, no longer accused, the defendant can accept, uh, can plead guilty to a lesser offense can plead guilty to a lesser offense. Uh, and then, of course, the punishment will be lesser. But there can be no question of somebody retaining one cobble of, of, what, of what is known, what, to the, what is traceable to, to him. Mm -hmm. But you can even see now that we have had an unprecedented level of success in recoveries. That is the major area we've succeeded in. When I say we, I mean the anti-corruption. Yes. Particularly FCC and ICPC. It's unprecedented. Are Nigerians being told or sufficiently uh, enlightened on how much is being recovered yes. and what, what is being recovered, yes. what is being used for, for okay. the benefit of the common That's government? a very good question. Um, previously, under the Jonathan government, there was a lot of relooting. But under the present government, the EFCC itself has a separate department for the management of recovered assets. A separate department set up okay. for that, which is accountable for every cobble. On top of that, the federal government has set up a body at ministerial level, headed by the Minister of Finance, to oversee the all the recovered recovery. assets. Mm -hmm. So it's strictly under control. Not only that, money is now being appropriated from it to uh, pursue what this federal government calls social um, investment, social to have investment. a social investment program. For example, all the free free uh, meals being enjoyed by school children. The 5,000 being given to... The 5,000 being given to poorest families, uh, women entrepreneurs being trained, young Nigerians who are being trained and given uh, capital to start quite a number of projects. In fact, I always say that uh, uh, Mrs. Weiss, who is in charge of mm -hmm. this program, has done so well, but somehow they have not publicized what they are doing. So the country doesn't know what is going on. 500 billion was taken from what? From the recovered assets to pursue these programs. 500 billion? 500 billion. 
social investment uh, yes. uh, program. Yes. So, a lot is going on. Uh, and there's a big difference between this government and the last one. Now, this, this whole thing, I mean, many Nigerians really don't understand this uh, 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 plea bargaining because many just felt that, okay, if somebody can agree oh, okay. that I, I stole, okay. then uh, you, you pat him on the back, you, you bring some to the coffers of government, and, and so on and so forth. But it's good to know that... Yes, uh, yes. sorry to interrupt you because I may forget to add it. But there are other, uh, other uh, various um, stages in the plea bargaining to protect it from becoming uh, corrupted. Apart from <coughs> pleading to a lesser offense and agreeing to give up everything. Uh, can that, you give uh, us an example of yes. what pleading for to a letter, lesser offense? I mean, somebody okay. is accused of yes. having, let's say, pension scam, uh, of having taken one billion pension scam. And then what, what kind of lesser offense can he plead to? Maybe, maybe he has... He has done a lot of, not, maybe not only pension scam, perhaps uh, some money allocated to the ministry, yes. which was not exhausted at the end of the financial year, has been shared. Yes. All right? If you cannot prove the pension scam, he may plead guilty to the second one. I see. Of, of having illegitimately collected okay. yes, money that was not... You know, that used to happen a lot. They, yes. would, they would just hide the money, they wouldn't spend all. Then at the end of the financial year, they just share it. That used to happen. So in addition to that, after the prosecution and the defense have agreed on the terms of the plea bargaining, they now have to go to the judge and present it to the judge. Okay. The judge has a discretion to reject it. He has a discretion to if he feels that it is uh, unfair, it, is, it favors the, 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 the defendant, defendant and so on, suspects that there is collusion of some sort, he can reject it. And once he rejects it, the matter is transferred to another judge. Okay. Because having rejected it, he has shown an interest in Indicate. the matter which uh, can be raised by the defense that is biased. So it goes to another judge. So there's quite a lot of layers of protection i'm told mm. that when um the cases uh, su such cases of looting when they are in court uh monies seized go to a certain account yes it's frozen as a certain account yes in the meantime Im imagine the case lasts for five years in the meantime can nigeria benefit from that money okay that's another good question you know it's a two-stage affair first you have the temporary Freezing order. Uh -huh. Yes. You apply to temporarily freeze it. And once the judge has given, and that, that is ex parte. You don't need to invite the other party. Yes. It's just the EFCC or the ICPC just goes straight to court to apply to have this amount of money which we suspect to have been illegitimately or criminally obtained by this fellow temporarily frozen. Yes. Once the order is given, the court will also order that within 14 days, the party should come back. The other party who is suspected to have uh, illegitimately uh, acquired the money is also served to come and explain to the court how he acquired this, this money. money. And if he doesn't come, then a permanent freezing order is given. If he comes, the judge will hear the two sides and then later give a ruling. Good. So what happens in the meantime if the case lasts for five years where is this money? Okay. Can the money yield some uh, dividend for the country? Okay. Now, um, there are two types of freezing. You have civil freezing. You have criminal freezing. In the case of civil freezing, it won't take any time. 14 days, the man is back. Okay. Within three months, five months, the case is over. So there's no problem there. Because in that one, the action is against the money, not against the person who looted it. I see. That person is not charged for any crime. Mm -hmm. He's just put on notice to come and defend his ownership mm -hmm. if he's the owner. Yes. So there's no, there's no question of proof beyond reasonable doubt. No, 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 no. Proof there. In fact, he has to prove. Yes. That it is his this money. For a change. He has to prove that it's his money and to state how he got it. So that one is easy. So, so there's quite a lot of permanent forfeiture that has occurred. 
At times, they even abandon the, the asset. Like the, refuse, the, 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 the 43, refuse, 43, 43 yes, million dollars. Exactly. And, and disclaim it. So that's no problem. Where we have problem is where you charge the person for a crime and attach his assets to as, the, part of as, that as part of that. The, yes, that's what can go on for a long time. The, what happens in such a situation is that the money, and this has not been efficiently done, but it has now been made clear to the judges in, in some of the workshops we've had, that when such an order is made, it is taken over by the court. The money is now to be taken over the, by the court and given to a bank, lodged in a bank, and let it earn interest. That's what I mean. Until the case is Until concluded. Until it is dis dismissed. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. On this note, we shall end the, uh, this segment of the program. I have been speaking with Professor Isis Sage, renowned lawyer and uh, well-known pro-democracy, pro-rule of law defender in this country. Prof, wonderful having you in this Thank studio. Thank you very much. Thank you.